What's up, y'all? This is Nightmare Baller One. Um, just here to get my review on Death Before the Sun and Night One. Before I get started, um, I got y'all questions. I'm gonna answer them as soon as I can. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a review of Death Before the Sun and Five Night Two after this video, and then um, after that, I probably get to y'all questions, but it probably won't be today. And um, I just want to let everybody know. Something's wrong with my Yahoo Messenger. It's acting crazy. So that's why I haven't been on in a long time. You know, whoever watching this video that may talk to me, it's, it's just acting crazy. It's been, it, yeah, it's getting on my nerves. But um, as I get that shit fixed, everything will be all right. But uh, yeah, let me get started. Like it freezes my computer. I don't know what's going on. I tried re-downloading it, but it did the same shit. But anyway, um. Devil for Design of Five Night One is a really good show, so I'm gonna get started. David Richards versus uh, Jack Evans started off the show. Really good match, man. Um, Jack Evans hit his uh, his his little knee drop, his trio woe knee drop. Really nice fight. Um, I say I say it's about a three star match. Uh, David Richards ends up ends up winning. Well, actually, no one wins because the No Remorse Code comes out, and you know he get involved, and then. The resilience comes out, and that's when Jack Evans starts talking about his group, which we now know is the Vulture Squad. So yeah, um, it was a great match, though. I wouldn't say, well, I don't know if I get three stars because it didn't have a real ending, but it was a good way to start this great show. All right, um, then you had Lacey versus Daisy Hayes. The winner got a shimmer title match against Sarah Del Rey. Um, Nothing really special right here. This is like a good Divas match. You know, I, I, I'm not going to say it was great. I'd say it was about two and a half stars. It was it was good for what it was. Um, Lacey got the win, but nothing you should really go out and see. All right, um, number three, you got Nigel McGinnis versus Chris Harrell, pure wrestling rules. Um, I thought this match for for the comedy and stuff, it, it was funny. The, the comedy <laughs> was funny, but... I mean, it wasn't really all that special. It was just really funny because Hero was really playing the heel character really well. And like he, his whole goal was like to make um, Nigel McGinnis waste his rope breaks. I thought that shit was hilarious. And um, during the match, you know, remember the whole Project 161 thing? The lights went out and then the guy came over to PA, started talking about Project 161. So, you know, now we know him as the age of the fall. But, uh, Chris Hero tried to lie to the, it was funny because when the lights went out and it came back on like 30 seconds later, Chris Hero tried to lie to um, the ring announcer to tell the referee that when the lights went out, Nigel used all his rope breaks. That shit was funny. I thought that was really funny. But um, yeah, not really too special. I'd say about two and three quarter stars, maybe three. It, it's, it's not really special. All right. And then we have Delirious and Brent Albright. Versus Matt Cross, Pele Primo, uh, Delirious versus Brent Albright versus Matt Cross versus Pele Primo versus J Eddie Edwards versus Jigsaw and Six Man Mayhem. This match was awesome. All right, it was sp it got spotty. I ain't gonna lie, it's a spot fest, but you will have a lot of fun watching this match. And I did not know how awesome Matt Cross was, y'all. I really didn't. I just thought like he was one of the backyard wrestlers that made it, like seriously. But yo, dude is dude is sick, man. Um. I give that match definitely three and a half stars, man. It's a really fun match. I've got to see it. It's a lot of great spots. It's too many for me to even talk about, man. You know what I'm saying? But Brent Albright was just dominating at one point, and then he ended up uh, chasing Delirious to the back. No, no, Mac. No. How did how did he lose? I can't remember. I know it had something to do with Delirious, and then Matt Cross hit like the uh, shooting star leg drop on I think it was Pele Primo and got the win. That was a great match. I mean, that was a really good match. I, um, then next you had Austin Aries and Eric Stevens versus Ryder Strong and Rocky Romero. Another really good match, man. Like, Ryder Strong, you know, he's always stiff and just those chops and you feel it, you know what I'm saying? And they were really working over um, Austin Aries' ankle, you know what I mean? I think he actually legitimately injured it because it's either he was selling it really good, like, you know, my boy Austin Aries can, or, you know, he must have really got injured. But, uh, yeah, man, this is a really, really good match. Um, I, I think Roderick Strong and Rocky Romero won. I can't remember. I think, I think, I think, 
think it was, well, it, I mean, it was a good match, all right? Y'all just need to know that. So I didn't write notes or whatever. I mean, it wasn't that important of a match, but it was a good match. Nice little, you know, match in between there. Definitely a three-star match, maybe maybe three and a quarter. Really good match. All right, then you had uh, what I thought, in all honesty, was uh, one of the best matches on the show, Brian Danielson versus Matt Seidel. I really enjoyed this match. And then uh, they were basically fighting over um, – Matt Seidel's cutting their money and the ten thousand dollar challenge, the eight man tag, and like uh, Brian Danielson and Matt Seidel was just going at it, and you know Danielson was doing all, all his submissions and stuff, and then it was just one part of the match where Brian Danielson was just pounding Matt Seidel with these elbows, and then like he caught him in the triangle choke and he was elbowing him in the top of the head. It was Brian Danielson could be yo. Honestly, with a little bit of training, I think Brian Davidson could be a mixed martial artist. Like, seriously. That was a... He, yeah, he was just brutal in that match, man. I definitely get that match three and three-quarter stars. Like, seriously, I really, really enjoyed that match a lot. All right. And then you have Takeshi Morishima versus Claudio Castagnoli for the ROH World title. If I didn't know Morishima was going to win this match, I mean, if I didn't know ahead of time that he won the match, I would have thought Castagnoli would have won because, man, like... A lot, like through all these months, a lot of people came close to beating Morishima. This is like one of the closest that anybody's ever come to beating him. You know what I'm saying? This was a great match. In my opinion, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. I give this match four and a quarter stars. Like seriously, this match was really, really good, and it's a match of the year candidate. Like seriously, it was it was just really great. I, like it was certain parts of that match with. Claudio Castagnoli, he like he had him like beat, like he he kicked out of the uh, Ricola bomb. I mean, he even he even got Morishima up for the big swing. I mean, who would who would expect Claudio Castagnoli to be able to get Morishima up for the big swing? I mean, this is a great match, dog. Like seriously, I'm definitely four and a quarter stars in my opinion. This is a really good match. Um, then you have the best match of the night, the main event, the street fight, the Briscoes. Versus Kevin Steen and El Generico. Okay, I'm not going to spend the rest of this time talking about all this. It was so many spots in this match, man. Um, and, and, but Kevin Steen was the MVP because it was one point in time the Briscoes had El Generico in the ring. And they were just destroying him. Like, they hit him with all sorts of double team moves. And Kevin Steen just kept breaking up the pin, pulling the referee out the ring. If it wasn't for Kevin Steen... It was this would have ended a minute ago, you know what I'm saying? And there was a few times I thought Kevin Steen was done, and he come out of nowhere and save El Generico. Y'all just got to see this match. This is a match of the year candidate, like seriously, without a doubt, in my opinion. This is a match of the year candidate. You know what I'm saying? To me, not counting the uh, the te I mean the Texas Death Match. I mean, yeah, counting the Texas Death Match. This is actually better than that. You know what I mean? This is a really good match. And um, I just wanted to say that, uh, see, when I talk about match of the year, I haven't watched enough, like, matches in Japan to really, like, throw J Japanese matches in there. But I'm pretty sure, like, you know, they've had some kind of no-DQ match that was better than this. But so far this year, um, this is the best no-DQ match I've seen. Like, seriously. It's, it's great. Y'all just got to check this match out. It's definitely, in my opinion, four and a half stars, man. This is a match of the year candidate. This is a must-see match. It's awesome. It's just too many spots to talk about. It is awesome. I cannot talk about it enough. This is a great show. I would definitely give it at least an eight, man. It was just a really, really good show. Really entertaining. In my opinion, two match of the year candidates on the card. And just a solid card from top to bottom. Y'all got to check it out. Peace.